Hey everyone, this is Pete, and welcome to the 400 Mini Show, in which we'll be exploring the built-in games of the 400 Mini, a modern emulation console that focuses on Atari 8-bit home computers and the closely related Atari 5200 games console, and onward into some recommendations for further games from those platforms that you might want to check out. At the time of recording, I haven't quite decided what uh, structure this series is going to take, but I think what I'm going to aim to do is try and put out a couple of videos a week. One based on the built-in games of the 400 Mini as we go through them, and a second based on games that you might want to add to the system using the, its uh, USB media access functionality. So those could be either modern homebrew games or they could be other titles from back in the day. We'll see how things go and take it from there. So this series isn't just for 400 Mini owners though, it's for anyone interested in discovering the games of the Atari 8-bit line of computers for themselves, whether that's on the 400 Mini itself, which is a good way of doing so, via alternative emulation solutions that you need to set up yourself on your home computer, or even on real hardware if you've got access to it. So for those of you who are more familiar with other 8-bit microcomputers such as the ZX Spectrum, Commodore 64 and Amstrad CPC, you might be surprised to discover that the Atari 8-bits lineup of games is completely unique to the platform. And in the few cases where games were available on other platforms and shot to fame, perhaps because of their Commodore 64 version, in many cases, those games had their origins on Atari home computers. For each game, we'll take a brief look at its history and then spend some time exploring it together, during which I'll do my best to explain how to play to the best of my knowledge and give you some practical demonstrations of how to do that. So my aim for these videos is to make Atari 8-bit games more well-known and accessible to newcomers, and of course to celebrate some all-time classics with the veterans of the scene. So, whether you're exploring the Atari 8-bit for the first time with the 400 Mini, or if you're an old hand with these classic computers, this series should highlight some great games to play. So let's get started. We're not going to go in any particular order with these other than what I arbitrarily decided, so we begin our journey through the built-in games of the 400 Mini with Mule which is an all-time classic game from 1983. It's one of the finest games available for the Atari 8-bit home computers, computers even, and a great experience whether you play solo or with up to three friends. Now, I will make one note at this point, which is at the time of recording, um, the disc image that uh, is included on the Atari 400 Mini of Mule unfortunately has a few little graphical glitches, which is a bit of a shame because that kind of detracts a little bit from the plug and play nature of the console. But it is very easy to source your own disc image of Mule. Um, I'll provide a link to anyone who asks for it. Um, and you can just load that in through the USB access. So until that gets patched in a firmware update, I recommend doing that just so you have the, the best possible experience. So Mule was developed by Ozark Softscape and published by Electronic Arts, which was a brand new company at the time. And indeed, Mule was one of the first five games that the company put out alongside Archon, Axis Assassin, Worms, with an ex uh, a question mark, and Hard Hat Mac. We've previously looked at Worms on the Atari A to Z series, but we've not looked at the others. Um, so we'll, they will probably come up at some point. Archon almost definitely will. The others I'm less familiar with. So Mule is a turn-based strategy game in which four players must cooperate and compete to run a successful colony on the planet Irata. While you've got to consider the good of the colony as a whole, to a certain degree, particularly on the higher difficulty levels, the real aim is to end up as the most wealthy colonist by the end of 6 or 12 turns, depending on which mode you're playing. So the game drew inspiration from several different sources, including SSI's 1981 economic simulation Cartels and Cutthroats, designer Daniel Buntenberry's previous Apple II game called Wheeler Dealers, the board game Monopoly, as you might expect, and two Robert A. Heinlein novels, one called Time Enough for Love, in which galactic colonization is represented in the style of the American Old West, which is a trope that was still actually quite an original idea in the early 80s, even if it's a bit overdone now. And The Moon is a Harsh Mistress, which presents the idea of a space colony without a fixed government or external authority. The game was developed for Atari 8-bit first and foremost because Ozark Softscape had a policy of developing for what they thought was the most advanced system available at the time and then porting to other platforms, making compromises where necessary. Mule was ported to Commodore 64 in the same year as the Atari version's release and then over the course of the following years it also found its way to IBM PC, PC-88, MSX2, Sharp X1 and even NES. It was universally praised by reviewers on its original release with many highlighting how it was an excellent example of a non-violent game in a marketplace that was dominated by arcade-style shoot-em-ups, action games and platformers at the time. 
Others drew attention to its successful implementation of real-world economic theories, such as the economy of scale, the learning curve of production, and the law of diminishing returns. And we'll talk all about all of those when we're playing the game. Another still simply drew attention to what an original, well-implemented concept it was, taking ideas from board games and adding an unmistakably video game machine to them, meaning it would be impossible to completely recreate the Mule experience on the tabletop, although there has been an attempt made in recent years. So Mule has maintained a considerable cult following to this day, and there's been several attempts to port, remake and enhance it over the years, but nothing quite matches the experience of playing the original, especially if you can bring three friends along for the ride. So, we're going to play Mule. So, we kick off with this options menu here, where you can press the option key, which is uh, the menu button on the 400 mini, or the select key to change the number of players. We're going to play a standard game. Um, each of the three difficulty levels actually incorporates slightly different mechanics. Standard is probably the um, sort of the most balanced one because so it's got some it's got some strategic depth to it, but then it's also got it's also not overly complicated, and the computer plays aren't quite as difficult. <coughs> Excuse me. So we then press the start button to go on. Insert a joystick or paddle for each planeteer. At least one joystick is required to play the game. Please press your button to go on. So I press the fire button there. Except it's gone back to the title screen because I took too long over uh, <laughs> deciding what I wanted to do. All right, option, standard. Start to go on. Press my fire button. And there we go. Then you pick a color. So it cycles around these colors one at a time. So let's be purple press the button to select. You then have a choice of different species to go for. Now for the most part this doesn't make a huge difference as far as I can make out. There are people who are absolutely convinced that there are differences between these species but I, I've been hard pressed to discover any definitive proof of that over the years. Um, apart from a couple, of, a couple of examples. So down in the bottom left corner we have the flapper from the Boyd Drop Galaxy. All flappers receive an extra $600 in their nest egg. That's a beginner species. So if you're inexperienced with the game, particularly if you're playing solo, you might want to go with the flapper. And then down in the bottom right, we have the humanoid from the Earth Systems. Humanoids start with $400 less because they are too smart. And they are the expert species. So if you want to handicap someone, um, you, you pick them. So I'm going to go with, let's go with the packer he's cute from the silicon system they love food and make excellent farmers when they don't gobble their crop press your button to select okay you have selected a standard level game with one planet here that means one human player the species chosen for this collie mechtron 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 for the computer players the computer players always play as mechtrons um, and then i am the packer press option key to change selections if you need to all players press buttons to go on and we then land on the planet Errata, which is Atari backwards, if you hadn't figured that out already. And we then got our summary for the beginning of the first turn. So, everyone starts with a thousand in money, no land. 150 worth of goods, which consists of food, energy, and ore. There's only one type of ore in the sta in the beginner and standard games, and there's two types in the tournament game, which is the most difficult one. Uh, and that gives us all a total of 1150. And the colony's total rating so far is 4,600. The one thing you're supposed to try and do in the standard and tournament games is make sure the colony ends up with a rating of, I think it's 60,000 or more. And that means that the colony has been successful. So there's kind of the, the idea that you're supposed to be cooperating to a certain extent to make the colony a, a success, but you also want to be ranked first in terms of personal wealth. So that's how that works. So you press the button to go on. The ship will be back in 12 months. So that's 12 turns later. Now, the first thing that's going to happen is uh, we're going to have the land grant during which a cursor moves across the screen and everyone can press their fire button to claim a plot of land for free. Now I'm just going to pause that for a sec. So there's the cursor up in the top left corner. There's three basic types of land in Mule that you can see on the map here. 
The one that it's highlighted at the moment, you see it's got those little grey triangles on it, that is mountainous terrain. The plain grey squares are um, flatlands and the orangey yellow line down the middle is the river valley. Now each of those are good for different things. Mountains are good for mining ore, flatlands are good for generating energy and the river valley is good for growing food. Um, now you need all three to a certain extent but you don't necessarily have to produce it all yourself. There's a lot of trading goes on in Mule. The important considerations are if you don't have enough food, then uh, you will have less time to complete your turn. If you don't have enough energy, then not all of your mules will produce products when it's, uh, when it's time to produce things. And if the colony as a whole doesn't have enough ore, then um, you won't be able to produce more mules, which means you won't be able to develop the colony further. So let's unpause. I always like to go for food first. It's in keeping with the packer as well. So green has gone for some mountains, red has gone for the valley as well, and blue has also gone for the valley. So no new plots for sale this turn. On the standard and tournament modes, there is sometimes an auction for an additional bit of land. We'll talk about how that works when we come to it. The computer takes their turn. You don't see exactly what they're doing, but you just see the after effects of it. So they've outfitted that for ore. Blue has got a bonus of some description. You won the Colony Swamp Eel Eating Contest and collected $50. Yuck. So yeah, if you're in first place, you will never get a good event. And if you are in last place, you will never get a bad event. Right, so it's now my turn. So the at this point, your lands start flashing, so you can quickly see at a glance which are yours and decide what you want to do. Timer doesn't start until you press the button, so you can figure out what you're going to do first. Then when you press the button, it zooms in to the central land, the central colony. Pick up a mule from the corral and take it into one of the buildings at the top to outfit it for food, energy or ore. That's food that we've done. The icon with the, the fork and the sickle for farming. You then move your little character over the house and press the fire button to install your mule. Every so often you'll see a little dot appear on one of the mountains. That is the Wampus. If you can catch him, which is quite difficult to do because he has the tendency to go into hiding. There we go. You caught the mounted Wampus. He gave you his treasure chest, $100 to let him go free again. So that's a bit of, a bit of free money. What you can then do, you can go into the land building to sell some of your land or you go into the pub to finish your turn. And you get some money uh, from gambling in the pub based on how much time you had left. So the quicker you complete your turn, uh, the more money you get. So now we've got a random event going on. This is sunspot activity, which means energy output is increased. Now no one is producing energy, so that doesn't affect anyone. We then produce things. So the big dots that appear on, the, um, on each piece of land indicate uh, a unit of production. The tiny dots that are underneath the icon indicate the base production for that land. So four is the best, and that indicates that um, you're likely to produce the maximum possible in there. And the actual amount that you produce can be, I think, one above or below base production. So you're not guaranteed that. I'm just going to pause it here and ex explain what this is. So what's just happened is we're into the auction phase of the game now. Um, you firstly do smith ore, so we see how much people have produced in terms of uh, in terms of smith ore in this case, and you then choose whether or not you're going to buy and sell. So sellers go at the top of the screen, buyers go at the bottom. Up at the top, we've got the stores price that people can buy from the colony stores, and at the bottom, we've got the stores price that they will buy from sellers. So no one else has any smith ore, as you can see from the units indicator at the bottom. Uh, but green is going to sell some smith ore to the store, which means that it will be available for mule production. 
And he's going to trade all five of those because there's no point hanging on to Smith or yourself unless you're deliberately trying to choke out the other players, which is a valid strategy. So that's the end of that auction. We then move on to food. So that's the amount we start with. That's how much we've used. So we've used three in a turn. A certain amount will spoil if you have too much as well. And that's how much we produce. So I've got the most at the moment. I've got a surplus of three because I'll only need three next turn. Uh, blue and red have got a surplus of two and green has a shortage of one. And the store's got eight units. So we're all up at the top, ready to sell. And we can then come down and try and try and sell to green. So he's bought a couple from uh, red. I'm going to hold on to mine for the minute. Because it's good to have a little bit of extra food. It's quite likely to spoil. So we've all used one energy because we've got one mule in play at the moment. No one's produced any energy so far. So we've all got a shortage of one. And the store has eight units to buy. So, assuming no one decides to choke out the others, we should all be able to buy a unit of energy. Oh, he's bought two. That's interesting. I might buy a second one as well then in that case. Right, the store is now completely run dry. So unless someone produces any energy next turn, we're not going to be able to um, power our mules. So that's the decision we're going to have to make when we are um, choosing our land plot. So I'm currently in third place with a value of 1,757. Colony value has gone up to 7,125. Green is currently in the lead, followed by blue. And let's continue. And we then go on from there. Now, do I risk trying to get that last river plot is the question. Yes, I can, because everyone else has already taken their turn. So I'm going to try and dominate the food market. Right, we've now got some land for sale over there. So we press the button to go on, and that then takes us to an auction for that land, which is represented in the same sort of way. You move up the screen, and that represents the price increasing, your bids increasing. And you keep going. Eventually, people will drop out. And whoever has the high bid, when the timer expires, will get the land. Uh, you know what? I want it. There we go. So I've now got two bits of land to play with. Well, there's some more land for sale down there. I'm not going to bother with this one. Although I might... Oh, I, I can't push the price up because I don't have enough money. So Green's getting himself a bargain there. Okay, so it's Green's turn. He's gone for energy and food. Now, food is best in the River Valley. That's not to say you can't produce it anywhere else. So, so he's trying to be self-sufficient there. Blue's prioritizing energy. Right, now my turn. So I want to get some food. I should have time to do both of these. Oh no. Okay, I did actually want to demonstrate that at some point. So if, if you press the fire button, you're not properly aligned with the um, with the little house, then your mule will just run away and you've lost that money that you, uh, that you invested in it. Okay, so let's pop him there. Don't know if we're gonna have enough time to do the energy one as well, but let's see. Not enough money. Okay, I guess that answers that. Should have thought of that, shouldn't I? <laughs> I 
Okay, but I've got that land there ready for doing something with later. You, I, I can't lose that unless I choose to sell it. Okay, so then we have production. Fire in the store. All the stock in the store is lost. So all of the um, stocked up food, all of the stocked up energy, and all of the stocked up ore uh, has been lost now. Excuse the noise outside. So it's now up to us to resupply the store to ensure that we can produce more mules, uh, that people can buy energy and fuel if, and, and food if they need it. So yeah, potentially a problem, but we'll see. No one else has got any smith ore to sell. So I've used three few three food. Keep going to call it fuel. One unit is spoiled, and I've produced that much. So only blue is short at the minute, and only red has got um, a surplus besides me. Now red is not wanting to move, so I can I can put my price pretty high. Because he needs that food. And then Red is going to sell his rest to the store. Which makes a certain amount of sense. Yeah, I'll do that as well. Just so this, just in the case of emergencies. There we go. And then seller at critical level means that you've sold enough. Uh, that you've left enough for your, for your own next turn. You can carry on selling after that if you want to. But it's, uh, it can be a bad idea if you're not prepared appropriately. Right, I'm too short on energy. They've all got a surplus. So I need to try and buy some energy at a reasonable price. So they're all going to come down to the store anyway. So if I just set my price at 10 like this, I'm offering the same as the store. And there we go. All right, I'm not in a super strong position at the minute, but we'll we'll see. In fact, I'm in last place. <laughs> I'm not sure I should have bought that land. That may have been a bad idea. But we'll see. We'll see how we go. Land grant. Now I'm going to take that one there for reasons I'll explain in a moment. Land for sale. I will pass on that one. As will everyone else from the look of things. Plot didn't sell. Okay, green's turn. So he's changing to getting a lot more smith ore. All right, red's turn. Going heavily on smith ore as well. Blue's turn. Smith ore on food. Okay, so there's going to be plenty of ore available. Oh, I've got a bonus because I'm in last place. You found a dead moose rat and sold the hide for $50. I won't complain. Right, you'll also see we're starting to get a bit low on mules in the corral. That's the side effect of having low smith ore. If there's no smith ore in the store, then mules don't get produced. So if I've got enough money, which I'm not sure I have, I want to get two energy plots. Oh, I've just got enough money. 
And the reason I wanted to put those two energy plots next to each other is because of this game's implementation of the economy of scale theory. Which basically means, in the context of this game, if you've got a bunch of plots that are next to each other, all producing the same thing, you get slightly extra production. I believe it's if, if there are two plots next to each other, um, then each plot will produce one extra unit over and above what it normally would. At the same time, there's also the implementation of a theory called learning curve, where if you've got three or more plots producing the same thing anywhere on the map, um, then you will also get extra production. Now you see there, because of the combination of the economy of scale and the sunspot activity, I've made loads of energy this turn. So I should be able to make a bit of money on that. Meanwhile, everyone else is dominating the smith ore markets and will probably be making more money than me, but we'll see. Store has no units. They're going to need energy. So... Interestingly, some of them have chosen not to sell their entire stock from the look of things. All right, food. Everyone's used three. Nothing left to spoil because we've eaten all of it. And I've produced nine. So I have a surplus of six, which conveniently is exactly what the others need. So I should be able to fleece them for fifty dollars a unit fleece it's supply and demand is what it is there we go now everyone's got what they need i got some more money everyone is happy so I should hopefully be able to get some some money from the energy as well. Because I've made an obscene amount of energy. As you can see, 16 units. Surplus of 13. Right, I just want to slightly undercut the other guy just to make sure that I get the deal. Now, in the case of in the case of draws in the auction, whoever is in last place gets priority. So you do get a slight advantage if you're last in the rankings. That also applies to the land grant as well. If if two people press their fire buttons at the same time to claim a plot of land in the land grant, um, whoever is lower down the rankings will get the priority. Okay, I'm now in second place with a total of 3,392. The colony is up to a value of 12,776, doing pretty nicely. Let's continue. Now I'm going to try and build on my energy empire. Because everyone else is pretty much cleaning up Smither at the minute. So not too much point in muscling in on that. Do I want that? I don't think I do. We'll try and push the price up a bit though. Got to be careful not to accidentally buy it. <laughs> there we go. So that made him spend a bit more money than he would have otherwise done so. Which is in my interest. Right, green's turn. My turn. 
You see the mules are restocked nicely because they uh, they sold a bunch of smith ore to the store last time. Let's get some more energy. I have a nice little energy farm up in the corner here. Oh, I just missed him. Oh, the, the collision on the Wampus is quite picky. And he doesn't appear if you're too close. All right, let's give up. All right, red is in last place or third place, I think. So he's got a, a bonus. Your mule was judged best built at the colony fair. You won $100. Blue's turn. He's also getting some energy. Planet Quick, mining production half of normal. And you'll also see over on the right that actually shifted a mountain over as well. So that's made Red's plot a little bit less valuable. All right, yeah, we're dominating the energy sector at the minute with all that production. they're going to make their money on their ore. And there we go. Now on to food. Everyone uses three. Nothing left to spoil. Plenty of production for me. A bit of a shortage going on with the others. So I can make some money here. You want your food, you're going to have to pay for it. Try and coax me down all you want. There we are. That actually proved quite profitable for me that turn. Hoping I can do something similar with the energy. Not sure how energy spoils, but it does. <laughs> 21 units. Surplus of 18. Ridiculous. He's only got like a surplus of one, I think, as they say. You want it? You pay for it. Yes. Give me my money. And I'm going to hold on to the rest. Because selling it for 10 isn't really worth my while. There we are, I'm now in first place. A value of 4,900. Colony value 16,480. That doesn't seem to have gone up a huge amount. But we're, we're making slow progress. Okay, I'm going to try and get some mountains this time, see if I can get in on the ore game. Let's have that one. Land for sale. I would quite like that one. I 
So then I can get two mining plots on the go straight away. And I should have the money to do that. Oh no, I'm... Bad event for me. You lost a plot of land. Oh no! Because the claim was not recorded. Oh, I lost one of my food plots. That's upsetting. Alright, well. These things happen. Get that back later. And in the meantime, sorry, my cats are having a fight. If you heard that, <laughs> Patty, let him in. Your mule won the colony tap da Patty, be quiet. Tap dancing contest. You collected $200. Well, good for you, Green. Everyone going hard on the ore. That's how you make the most money, to be fair. Do you need a supply of the others? Mm. Not at all. Oh no. Can I eat my food? Shit. Good old random events. Okay, so we all want to be selling. And we will all be selling to the store. And as always, the priority goes in the order of ranking, so... One little tip. If you're selling multiple units, if you keep pushing the direction um, into the store, then you will gradually sort of accelerate the pace at which you're selling. Whereas if you just stand there, it will just sell at a constant rate. So if you want to be precise, don't push in the direction of the store. If you want to sell a lot, then keep pushing in the direction of the store. All right, I have, I have a, a food problem this turn. Right, you see, I now need four foods. So I, I believe the amount of food that you require gradually escalates as the game proceeds. We're going to have to pay store prices. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> this is my own fault. I caused this. Right, well. My surplus of 19, hopefully I can make a bit of money back. But because I'm short of food, that means I will have less time to complete my turn next turn. You want some? You come and get it. You come and get it.
Okay, back down to second place. The colony has a shortage of food. Total value is up to 20,000, mate. All right, let's see what we can do about the food situation. All right, we get that plot back. No new plots of sale this turn. And their time's run out so they don't get any money from gambling because they don't have time to get back to the pub. Right, my turn. Food shortage decreases time. Right, it's only short by one though, so that hopefully should... Yeah, it hasn't reduced it by too much. The more short on food you are, the less time you have. So I've got plenty of time to go and install this food mule. So it's all good. Everything is happy. Not going to bother playing Hunt the Wampus, though. And $111 gambling. A distant relative died and left you a vast fortune. But after taxes, you only got $200. That's still not to be sniffed at at this point in the game. Just going to shut the door. It's getting a bit cold. Your off-world investments in artificial dumbness paid $300 in dividends. Blimey. But they had no time to go to the pub. Meteorite strike. Now, I think that increases how ore rich that area is, if I remember correctly. So, I suspect we're going to have a race to claim that next turn. Everyone going crazy on the smith ore production. Blue not selling for some reason. He's hoarding it. I'm going to sell all mine. For the good of the colony, you see? For the good of the colony. The good of everyone. Alright, food time. Should be in a healthier situation this time around. Not a huge surplus, but enough to sell to those who need it. Help the needy and all that. Oh, look at the price of that. Look at the price of that. I can get them to push that up a bit. Yeah, you need your food, don't you? Keep going, keep bidding, keep going up, keep going up, keep going up. Come back. Oh, I missed my chance to sell to red there, but that's okay. That's okay, I fleeced green successfully. Surplus of 17. Everyone else is in a reasonably healthy state. But I can make a bit of profit. Come on, come and get it.
And I'm back in the lead. Alright, Colony Valley now 27,299. The colony has a shortage of food. Do we? Oh, I guess red is short, aren't they? Because he wouldn't buy from me at my same pr obscene prices. Now, I'm not sure if the meteorite strike um, increasing the ore production of a square is just on tournament mode. It might be, but I'm, I'm not sure. Either way, this will be my third smith ore plot, so that will increase my overall output of smith ore. No one wants the land. Actually, because energy is a solved problem in this colony, even if it's a bit pricey. Thanks to me. Right, my turn. Let's grab a mule. Pop him in there. Forget the wampus. I've got more profit to be made elsewhere. <laughs> Bonus for the computer. The museum bought your antique personal computer. For four hundred dollars. Well, that's not on, is it? You just received a package from your homeworld relatives containing three food and two energy units. Oh no. Well, at least I at least I haven't gone all in on mining. It did wreck um green and blue's plot say. You see, because the mountain moved, it actually um broke their mining facilities. Oh dear, just four units. Five units with the other one. That's that's okay. Everyone's still stockpiling in the hope of a last minute price frenzy. What normally happens with the computer is they end up stockpiling a bunch of smith ore and then selling it all on the last turn. And we're selling it all now. Fair enough. Well, everyone's quite rich now. Oh, I'm being beaten on food. That's not acceptable. We got a price in the store though. It's worth selling the surplus to the store. Hmm. We're gonna have problems with blue going forward from the things. I 
I could take him. I'm still in charge of this market. There we go, I'm now actually back in the lead on money. Which is nice. Bit of wheeling and dealing. And that puts me in the lead. Alright, colony up to 31,914. Plots for sale. Starting to get a bit full up now as well. You can change the mules that you've got installed at any time if you want to, as you've probably seen the computer do. I'm quite happy with the with what I've got going on at the minute though. I'm pretty self-sufficient. I'm making a good profit each turn. And I'm sort of helping the colony while I'm making money, so optimal, I say. You received an extra plot of land to encourage colony development. Lucky old red, you got a free plot. Oh, everyone moving into the energy market now. Oh no, not again. So many quakes this game. Hmm. Not amazing mining production, but then there was the quake. Yeah, no one no one came out of that particularly well. You want to buy? You want to buy? Come on then. Well, no. I don't think I will sell to you. I think I'll keep it for myself. Thank you very much. Surplus of three. Oh, we're up to using five food per turn now. You're selling to the store, you coward. I will hold on to mine then. Everyone seems to be trying to muscle in on this market this turn. I've still got dominance though. Only blue with the shortage. 
but the others are probably going to get priority on selling. Let's undercut the others a little bit. There you go. 35. Bargain. Okay, still in the lead. Only total up to 35,000. Proceeding nicely. Alright, what do I want? Not a lot of choice now. <laughs> That's not the plot I, I wanted, but I wasn't quick enough. It wasn't quick enough. Do I want that? No, I probably don't. But you, you lot, go fight over it, by all means, please. Good lord. Keep going, keep going, keep pushing that up. Right, what do I want to do with that lonely plot of land down there? Um, it's not connected to anything, and I, I bet the other players are going to grab the adjacent ones before I can. So, it probably just makes the most sense to... Here's your food. Let's go... Oh, God. Uh... Energy. Right, so I'll try and maximize production. Something bad for blue. Your mining mules have deteriorated from heavy use and cost $150 each to repair. The total cost is $600. That's the Monopoly pay maintenance on all your houses card, isn't it? <laughs> all right, green. Heavy on the ore again. Bonus for red. Oh, I didn't see what it was. Itchy trigger finger. Mule goes crazy. Oh no. Would be one of mine, wouldn't it? Never mind. Very poor food production this turn. Oh, it's going up. It's going up. It was just taking a while. Getting some decent ore output this turn as well. Well, green's is set to make some money. <laughs> Do you want to buy? I don't understand. But fine, you can have some. There you go. Now I have all the money.
Surplus of four food. Not set to make a huge amount of profit this turn though, because I think Blue's going to get in there first. Yeah, I'll hang on to mine for a minute. Those mining mules taking lots of energy. I am more than happy to help. Come on, come on. Up you come. That'll do. Seeing some huge swings in the amount of money changing hands. And I am still on top for the moment. Colony up above 40,000. Very good. We might make it to 60,000 by the end. We'll see. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Oh. I don't get another one because I'm first. Oh no, what now? Your space gypsy in laws made a mess of the town. It cost you $450 to clean it up. Disgusting. They prefer the term space travellers these days. Thank you very much. All right, that'll do. So the last couple of turns is just going to be all about jiggling things around, trying to make the most profit. I think I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with where I am at the minute, actually, to be perfectly honest. Because we're getting decent production and everything. We've got a reasonable income from the smith ore. We're making some good profit on the energy and occasionally on food. And we've got plenty of stock we'll be able to sell in the last turn, so... Some good L or output this turn. Pirate ship. Oh no. Oh, I think they steal all the ore in the in the store. I love how they're polite enough to reverse, but oh, they take all of it. All of it on the map. Oh, that's nasty. Well, sucks to be all the others. So yeah, no, no smith or auction at all this turn because no one's got any to, <laughs> no one's got any to sell or buy. Wow.
Now, fortunately, I don't think I need any next turn because I don't need any more mules. But that puts a big dent in everyone else's profits, certainly. That might, that might win me the game. <laughs> Go on, you sell your little bit. If you want more, you got to come and get it. if that has an impact on the colony score if they've stolen all the ore from the stocks oh it does oh dear oh dear don't think we're going to make our target no new plots to sell because there's no space left um hmm what to do should I swap things around a bit No, I think I'm going to... Or should I? Oh. No, no, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to leave things how they are. Because things things are comfortable how they are. I've got lots of money, I'm making profit. Others may well be absolutely boned by the lack of smith or we'll see. Energy output increased. That's what I like to hear. My energy empire up in the northeast. Busy turn. Very busy turn. <laughs> Blimey. Well, I think they're all right, aren't they? Blue not selling. Interesting. Well, I'm going to sell all of mine for the good of the people. Well, you're all a touch short on food, aren't you? Shame I've only got a couple of units to spare. But for you. The knockdown price of $50 a unit. And that's cutting me own throat.
You're gonna have to buy from the store. I don't have any more. Energy Empire continues to rule the roost. Produced an insane amount this turn. But not really a shortage. So not a lot of profit to be made this turn, unfortunately. No, let's hang on to it for now. For when people need it, if they need it. If not, we just sell it all in the last turn. I believe this is the final turn coming up. Back to 44,000. No new plots for sale. Nothing I really want to do, so let's just go to the pub. I should have probably swapped some energy plots to smith or shouldn't I? Never mind. Yep, here's the ship. So this is the final production and auction phase. And then we see who wins! And if the colony was successful. I think it was 60,000. I've got that figure in my head for some reason. But thinking about it, that might be a bit high. We'll see, I guess. I suspect they're all going to sell all their stock this turn. Will that be enough to win them the game, though? That is the question. Oh, they're not going to sell it. Okay, fair enough. Hang on to it. Ooh, hang on to it. See how, See what good it does you. Because you, the the goods you have on hand are part of your overall net worth. I'm not sure how it calculates. Not sure how it calculates how much each is worth though. But I think it's probably, judging by their behaviour, probably sensible to hold on to it. This last auction phase always feels a bit pointless because of <laughs> exactly what's happening here. Everyone's like, nope. Nope, this is my stuff. I'm holding on to it. Oh, I didn't win. That's upsetting. Overall, the colony survived. Barely. You will be living 
intense. Few trading ships will come your way. Okay, so I guess it is 60,000 you need to be a complete success. Oh, I was 26 off winning. Oh, that's so upsetting. That's so upsetting. <laughs> Never mind. Anyway, that is Mule. That is how to play a standard difficulty level game of Mule. Um, yeah, good fun. Definitely recommend playing this, either both solo and with other players. It's a ton of fun. It's always been a favourite of mine, and it's uh, it's great to have an easy way to play it with friends, thanks to the 400 Mini, even if the included disc image is unfortunately a little bit broken at the time of recording. But hopefully that will be fixed before long, uh, because it's it's been reported. So with any luck, we'll have a firmware update that will sort that out before long. And in the meantime, as I say, you can just use a different disc image, such as the one we're using here. Anyway, just remains for me to say, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time. Thank you.